Americans are really, really bad at voting. And I'm about to tell you why and how we can fix it. It's election day. Are you ready to vote? Oh, wait. I forgot how you approach voting. Like you're choosing from your favorite fast food menu. It's like, hmm, do I want the burger? Do I want the chicken nuggets? Nah, I'll just go for the fries. Huh? But for real, that's how some of you vote. You have no idea who's on the ballot. It's like you're just guessing. Who is John Doe? No clue. But his name sounds familiar. So sure, why not? Jane Smith? Did I not go to school with her? Probably not. But whatever. John Cena? I've never seen that one. But I'll vote for him anyway. Look, come here. It takes very little time to research. It takes less time to research a candidate than it does to binge watch the latest Netflix series. You can literally Google someone in two minutes. But no, we're out here treating the elections like a multiple choice exam that we did not study for. Emotional damage! And let's look at our local elections for a moment. Oh man, everyone loves to show up for the presidential race, right? We love the drama, the rallies, the spectacle, the merge. But local elections, forget it. Who cares about the mayor or the city council, right? These are only the people that control your school boards, uh, your schools, your roads, even whether you get a parking ticket or not, your policing policies. And yet, we ignore them, thinking the presidency is all that matters. Here's the reality. The president is not coming to fix that pothole on your street or address that rising property taxes in your neighborhood. The American dream is dead. That's your local official's job. These elections affect your everyday life, but we often overlook them like they're irrelevant. We have to do better. Now, let's get into my favorite excuse. My vote doesn't count. Why should I vote? My vote will not count. Really? Tell that to the fans who spend every night voting for their favorite contestant on some reality TV show. If your vote can help some random singer from Illinois to win a million dollars on America's Got Talent, then your vote can absolutely make a difference in an election. There are many examples of elections that have come down to just a handful of votes. Imagine you are sitting there convinced that your vote does not matter and then waking up to find out that the mayoral race in your town was decided by three or two votes. Oh! And one of those votes could have been yours, but instead you were busy watching The Bachelor or scrolling through Instagram or watching The Office. No! And then we have people that vote based on political ads. Let me tell you something. We have all seen those ads on YouTube. Political ads are like bad relationship advice. They never work. <laughs> they promise you the world but leave you with disappointment. And they're like one night stand. They say vote for me. I'll deliver world peace, economic prosperity, and maybe even free pizza on Fridays. Yeah, sure. You know, political ads are designed to manipulate your emotions not inform you. They are like those late night infomercials that claim the product will change your life. But you all know how that turns out. So if you are casting your vote based on who had the flashiest hat, who was smiling the most, you're basically buying into the political version of a shake weight. We know those ones. Those ones that you shake. I don't want to go into it. Then there are the people who don't vote at all. Those are my very worst people. They don't even bother to vote. Come on. Some of you treat election day like it's Netflix and chill day. You have taken off work. You're lounging on your couch, scrolling through your phone, thinking, ah, I'll vote later, I'll vote when it comes to it, maybe after this episode. Meanwhile, there are people out there voting. They are deciding your future and you're sitting on the couch, deciding whether to start another series or not. Guys, if you can binge watch an entire season of Stranger Things in one weekend, you can absolutely take five minutes to cast your vote. You can sit down and watch the Kardashians. What's up with the Kardashians anyway? Why, why, is, why do people watch that? I don't understand. So let's break it down. How can we all become better voters? And I say, when I say we, I mean you. Because if you are watching this video, you are probably a bad voter. Oh! It's simple. First, do your research. And when I say research, I don't mean Facebook or X or Instagram or Truth Social, all of those ones. That's not research. We do live in a digital age and you can find almost everything, if not everything, you need to know online. Secondly, try to vote in every election, not just the presidential election. It is not even the most important one. Your senators are the ones that are making laws and your congressmen. Local elections matter. Yeah, if you're worried about the long lines at the poll, bring snacks, bring snacks. You sneak snacks into the movies all the time and it's not even allowed. Same deal. Bring snacks. It's not that hard. Hmm? Just like you plan your week anyway, plan your vote, make it part of your routine. You know, let's stop making excuses. America, time you start taking your voting seriously. Because if you don't vote, someone else out there is making decisions for you. And trust me, you don't want your future to be decided by somebody like me. 
who picks his candidates based on who had the nicest smile or the nicest swag or the best dress in their campaign ad. You don't want that. Or who's going to legalize certain things? I'm not going to mention them. Now, before we wrap this up, I want to address something that we are overlooking sometimes. I know uh, we joke about this a lot, but voting privilege. It is a right in America, but it's still a privilege in the, on the world stage. You are out here joking about your vote. But let's take a moment to remember that their right to vote is a luxury that millions of people around the world don't have. In the United States, we have the extraordinary freedom to choose your leader, criticize them to ensure peaceful transition of power. Most of the time. But in many parts of the world, this fundamental right is denied. Let's talk about Zimbabwe under the rule of Robert Mugabe, very famous man. Decades of, rule, of ruling and elections were nothing but a, a farce, a facade, if you want to call it that. Mugabe himself once said, the people of Zimbabwe are free to vote. Actually, he didn't say it like that. Uh, the people of Zimbabwe are free to vote whoever they want, as long as they vote me. That's what he said. Can you imagine living under that kind of oppression? And Zimbabwe is not an isolated case. There are many other countries that I will not mention because I don't want to disappear tomorrow. Cameroon, I'm looking at you. In countries like this with authoritarian regimes, elections are either rigged or don't happen at all. Citizens are stripped of their ability to choose who governs them. Or even worse, speaking out that against their government could result in imprisonment or worse, or disappearing. Again, I'm looking at you, Cameroon. Here in America, we are taking voting for granted, but it is one of the most powerful freedoms that we have. You can walk into a voting booth, cast your ballot, and walk out without fearing for your safety. And yet, many a times, I've walked in and I've seen an empty voting place. People are not voting because it's a local election. That's something that many people in many parts of the world are still dreaming of ever having. Leaders like Nelson Mandela fought for the right to vote in their country. In South Africa, Mandela famously said, uh, I have cherished the ideal of a, a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunity. It is an ideal for which I am prepared uh, to die. Think about that. Not the horrible accent that I just did. Think about what Mandela said. Mandela was willing to unalive himself or be unalive for the right to vote, for the freedom to choose. And here we are, sometimes unwilling to even get off your couch to exercise that same right. What is wrong with you? What did McDonald's do to you? Voting is a privilege, a right in, a, in the US, obviously. But it's, also, it's still a privilege, a right that people have fought for and died for, both here in the United States and around the world. So why are we treating it like it's optional? Every time you cast your vote, you are honoring those sacrifices of those individuals who died to protect that right. You are protecting a right that others are still fighting. So next time there's an election, don't take it for granted. Go out and vote. Voting is not only about choosing your leader. It's about safeguarding the freedom to choose at all. Thank you for watching. And remember, make your vote count, not just for yourself, but for everyone who fought for the right to have it. Send this video to all the stubborn voters that you know, all the stubborn Americans that don't go out to vote. Let them be inspired to go out and vote. Vote for, just go out and vote. It doesn't matter. But be informed before you vote.